So what does this look like? This is probably the best slide. Right. A little cute now robot. Moving through one acceptable path in this final supervised product automaton. So this is for the cheerleading case. And you see a lot of sort of presentational movement. You see a lot of, um, you know, I think that this is really cheerleading-esque kind of pose. Um, and of course, I, I, I was never a cheerleader. I can't certify this as being cheerleading. But what I can <laughs> say is I know, first of all, exactly mathematically this phrase is describing what's there. And I know that it's different than what I see here. So this is my disco dancing style. And you'll see a lot of sort of below the shoulder kind of um, close in movement with just this one sort of key disco dancing kind of movement. And so the two different styles are different, right? And they have different formula guiding the production of what this can be. And there's a lot of YouTube video research um, involved in this when I was at Georgia Tech. I don't know if, if you did a lot of disco dancing watching as a part of your... <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, again, it's different, right? So now I have these knobs, and as I'm changing these knobs, I'm changing the sequences. But in both of these cases, the robot moves kind of very similarly, right? It's actually linearly interpolating between each pose and just, and just taking kind of that basic pathway between them. And so now what I want to do is inject a little bit of variation from that point of view. So I'm going to do that by thinking about Laban's notion of effort. And Laban names these four motion factors, and we're going to map these four motion factors to an optimization problem. So first, what we have to do is come up with a system. We have to be very precise about what the system is. I'm going to think about my little now robot is even simpler than he already is. That's just a shoulder angle and an elbow angle. And I'm going to take those strain angles, and I'm going to toss them in their velocities into a state vector x. And I'm going to think about an input u that I can modify the acceleration of those joint angles. And then I have an output y, which is just a shape, and a reference, which is also a shape that I use to refer to as I create these factors. <coughs> and I just assemble this as a linear system that just, it's not physics, it's not f equals ma, it's just these joint angles evolving over time in relationship to their positions and velocities and accelerations. And so now what I can do is craft an optimization that's subject to these evolving constraints. Um, is going to give me a principled way of picking these trajectories. So I'm going to take this reference trajectory, this little orange straight line that my robot was doing in, in, in the videos, and I'm going to, what I hope to do is produce a curve that isn't exactly like that reference trajectory anymore, some variation on it. And I'm going to do that principle on a cost function that I'm just going to make up. And I'm going to map it to Laban's four factors. So the first factor Laban names is this notion of space. And it can be direct or indirect in space. And I'm going to associate it with a matrix that penalizes in terms of my cost. And the deviation of my output, my system, from my reference. So how much this output deviates from my straight line trajectory. And I'm going to make similar maps for these space, weight, flow, and time. But the idea is that whatever this all adds up to, as I change Q, R, P, and S, these four factors, I'm going to be minimizing every time, right? So there's this principal thing that happens that's repeatable that a computer can figure out, basically, right? And, and as I change Q, R, P, and S, I'm going to change that red line. So I have this mapping between matrices and Laban's quality. And I use something called, like a, basically, calculus to find the optim optimal set of, uh, con uh, what do you call it, conditions for this trajectory to be optimal, right? And that's going to be my new sort of quality enriched trajectory. So for cheerleading and disco dancing, I'm going to pick these different sets of qualities, right? So here I have space, weight, and time. I'm going to graph them, showing you that I'm picking different choices for each, which just means that these weights are either relatively large or relatively small. And in this cost function, I'm penalizing different things for the different um, styles of motion. So this is the whole enchilada. So I'm not only looking at those sequences that we saw before on the robot, but I'm also changing how I evolve between each pose. 